Hi there and welcome back. Today I'm going to be working on this Japanese black pine which is part of my collection and doing some autumn maintenance on it. If you find the following content helpful then you can thank me by clicking the thanks button just below the video. When you see brown needles like this, don't panic. They are just old needles and that's one of the things that we're going to be removing in today's work. I'll also be selecting buds that I wish to keep. So I'll be going through the tree and looking for areas where I have more than the two buds and removing the excess. To increase sunlight penetration into the structure of the tree, I will also be trimming these needles a bit shorter. This branch which was allowed to grow in order to strengthen the back buds will also be reduced in length. I'll also be using vinegar to spray on the trunk to kill off this growth that has started to develop the, on the bark. A pair of pine needle tweezers makes the job of removing needles or plucking needles far easier. You will notice that the pine needle tweezers has def definite grooves in the raised area this, uh, at the point of the tweezers which makes it much easier to grasp the full needle length. On a standard pair of tweezers you will very often find that the needle will get in the way for the tool being able to close properly and this results in the needle sliding out of the tweezers. Here you are able to see a pair of pine tweezers, the jaws or the teeth being able to exert the full force on the needle to grip it properly so that it enables it to be plucked out because the needle is not in the way of the tool closing. After some use, resin from the pine needles will deposit in the teeth which makes the teeth uh, slip on the needles and so using a hard brush like this steel brush is uh, great for removing the resin from the teeth. Start needle plucking the tree from the apex and work down. In this way the needles that you have removed from the tree will be cleaned off the tree when you're finished. Always remove needles starting from the furthest point away from the tip and then work towards the tip leaving the, the desired number of needles that you wish to keep, which in our case it's 10 pairs of needles. The action of plucking the needle should be a pecking type of action. Don't waste time trying to throw the needle that you've removed away, rather just pluck it out and let it drop and move on to the next needle. Much of the work that is performed on Japanese black pines or two needle pines in general for that matter is aimed at energy balancing. Our objective with balancing the energy in the tree is that the buds will develop evenly in spring. So in order to give each bud on this tree equal opportunity to develop in the spring, I'm reducing the needles to 10 pairs evenly or uniformly across the tree from the apex to the, the lower branches. When selecting which buds to keep in the lower regions of the tree, you want to keep those that are growing in a horizontal fashion and remove those that are growing vertically. In the apical portion of the tree, you're of course going to keep the buds that are growing vertically, but also in the best positions. Most times you're going to need a pair of trimming scissors to trim out the superfluous buds, but sometimes it's possible to use a pair of tweezers just to pluck them off. It's not unusual at all to see backbudding developing on even older branches like this if a pine becomes quite vigorous. However, if the backbuds do not receive sufficient sunlight, they will not develop properly. 
and this is actually the main focus of the work that is done on Japanese black pines during autumn, which is to promote sunlight penetrating the inner portions of the tree to help those buds to develop in spring. This is also why you reduce the amount of needles by plucking them and also why in certain cases like this one where the pine was not decandled in summer because it had previously been repotted and was too weak to do so, you will find that the needles develop too long and uh, so by cutting them roughly in half you can also further increase the sunlight. If your pine was previously wired you'll also be wanting to watch out for wire bite which may become a problem at this time of the year as the tree puts on girth on the branches. In the previous example there was no wire bite and so it's advisable to allow that wire to remain and check on it again in spring. But in other areas if it is starting to bite in it's a good idea to use a pair of pliers to do the reverse of applying the wire. In other words unwinding it and then when you've un unwound a so short section you can cut that. Here's an excellent example of wire bite that needs to be attended to. As you can see the wire has thoroughly bitten into the, the portion of the branch, structural branch here at this point. So carefully unwinding it, uh, ideally in the same sort of track or angle that it was applied, will bring it out of the groove with the least amount of damage possible. If you do find that you lift up some of the bark, it is advisable to seal it with some form of sealer. Be sure to use your tweezers also to remove the needles that may have fallen onto the bark of the trunk. If when you were watering the tree during the summer you noticed that it was difficult for water to penetrate the growing medium, it's a good idea to use a pair of angle tweezers or some form of rake or something to take off or remove the top say two centimeters of soil, one or two centimeters, and then backfill that with fresh soil. If you allow moss to develop on the bark, it's going to cause the bark to rot. And so what we're going to use is undiluted uh, white grape vinegar, brown grape vinegar, whatever vinegar, but just undiluted. And this is going to, as a result of its extreme acid uh, pH value, it will kill that moss fairly instantaneously. Take precautions to prevent the vinegar from entering the growing medium as this will also have an undesired effect on the roots. I'm using an old towel. If you found that content helpful and you'd like to thank me for it, please do so now by clicking the thanks button just below the video.